This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Hey there, Arty! Mion made up an excuse for her red eyes by saying there was something wrong with her contacts. Wait, her eyes just turned red? What the butts? After that, neither Rena nor Mion spoke to me for the rest of the day. Neither Satoko nor Rika-chan looked me in the eye. Strangely, I didn't feel hurt. Everything had just gone back to the way it was. The month I, since I transferred had been almost too much fun. That was all. School was supposed to be something like this to begin with. I should have disliked that feeling, but today it felt oddly refreshing. So Mia also just admitted that she was going to assassinate Uisi. What the... What the... What the hell? <laughs> the bell rung, uh, sounding at the end of the monotonous school day, which had felt so tense yet so dull. Since it would cause a lot of unpleasant memories if they asked me to join in the club activities, I promptly started preparing to go home without even looking at them. I stuffed the contents of my desk into my bag, wrapped my hand around Satoshi's now familiar bat, and began heading towards the entrance. I was assailed by both the exhausting relief that something had happened today and the tiring possibility of the same thing repeating tomorrow. But, deep down inside me, far beneath in the recesses of my heart, achingly, I knew this would be the last day of this cycle. I couldn't tell how the ending would be. Whether it was the end I wished to end, or if it would end as I had hoped it wouldn't. Regardless, in my current state, there was something more important than how things would end. There was something I wanted to know. Why did I have to be killed? How did it come to this? Why? For what purpose? The sunlight was relentless. The sun, the heat, even the air. They wouldn't give me my answers. Or could it be that the cries of the Higarashi were desperately trying to tell me something. Somewhere, mixed in with their shrieks, Tomotake-san and Satoshi were also s probably trying to tell me something. I simply haven't been able to realize it yet. When I do realize it, I wonder if I will be amongst the Higarashi fruitlessly crying to the next victim. Glancing down at my feet, I saw a Higarashi on his back, spasming weakly. Wee, wee, wee. There was still much of the summer left, yet this one was already chirping its last song. I couldn't tell what it was saying, no matter how hard I listened. But I had to try. I had to try to listen to what it was desperately trying to tell me. At that moment, the shrills of the Higarashi ceased all at once. As if they had huddled together, fearing that the person who had brought them to their dreadful fate had arrived. There was no mistaking it. A presence was approaching. The sound of the footsteps was almost non-existent. If the Higarashi hadn't warned me by ending their chirping, I wouldn't have noticed. My exhaustion left me in a heartbeat. In its place was a rush of adrenaline that sharpened all my senses. I was just barely able to hold back that creeping, suffocating feeling of horror. It wasn't something I could hold back for long. But in this moment, when I needed to be razor sharp, I was able to retain my composure. I wasn't going to shout like I did yesterday. I hid myself calmly amongst the trees, waiting for my pursuer's shadow. Could I get them to pass by me? No. Since I was able to hear their footsteps, they were probably also able to hear mine. They might have already been able to tell that I'd hidden myself and was holding my breath. The person telling me... Tailing me, was it Rena, just like yesterday? If it was Rena, I wouldn't hold back. I could just yell at her and make her go away like uh, go ahead like yesterday. If it wasn't Rena, it would depend on how they acted, I guess. The footsteps ambled closer. I swallowed, wiped my clammy hands on my pants, and readjusted the grip on the bat. I could tell that the fear that I had beaten back once was now waiting for another opening to come at me. Who could it be? I peeked out from behind the tree at the person following me. Uh... Uh, you've got something in your hands, and I don't like that. My imagination hadn't led me astray. It was Rena. It was a bit of relief when I saw it was someone I knew, but that feeling left me in an instant. That wasn't the same Rena that I knew. Her eyes were dark and lifeless, but her mouth appeared as if she was carved into a crescent. Yes, it looked like she was grinning slightly. And in her right hand, there it is, was a hatchet.
I hid myself behind the tree once again and recalled the unbelievable sight that I just saw. What was that just now? The embodiment of terror laid bare. Baseball. Practicing my swing. There were tons of excuses for me to be carrying a bat. But for that hatchet? There was no excuse for that. Also, that's not a hatchet. That's a butcher knife. A hatchet just like that? Hi, Rana. You look lovely today. Please don't kill me. My heart was pounding. Hard enough that I had trouble breathing. What little composure I had been able to hold on to was now crushed. In its place, cold sweat gushed forth, covering my entire body, letting me know precisely what kind of emotion I had taken hold. Yep, two mentally unstable people with weapons. This could only end well. Not good, not good, not good. I wasn't able to hide myself completely. She already knew I was here. I decided that it would be better to reveal myself now, since there was still space between us, rather than allow Rena to come any closer. I adjusted the grip on the bat again, readied myself mentally, and stepped out from behind the tree. Yes. <laughs> That's not a creepy laugh or anything. Yikes. Rena was pleased that she found me, eliciting a mysterious giggle. Her mouth was smiling, but her eyes told me that she was displeased by the fact that I had been hiding. Those eyes. They were just so empty. My legs began to quiver. Ugh, not good. In the pit of my stomach, some sort of vicious hot and cold substance began spreading around. If I allowed it, that substance would slip into my bloodstream and undoubtedly freeze all the organs in my body. Not good. Not good. I'll be devoured by Rena at this rate. Strike back! Don't lose! I blustered, trying hiding behind my bravado. But Rena didn't flinch one bit. You don't treasure hunt with a butcher knife, Rena. Duh. Rena gave a flippant explanation as to why she had such a fearsome weapon. Then you aren't heading home, you're heading to the dam site. LIAR! Oh boy. Whatever happened to Colonel Sanders? I expected Colonel Sanders to factor into the plot more. <laughs> oh, that's not a normal laugh. I didn't imagine that one. Rena's laugh was obviously very strange. I'd seen Rena's transformation many times before, but the one today was completely different. Like her mischievous tone and the shrewd glint in her eyes. It wasn't something that roundabout. I'm not sure what to say. It was just so obvious. No, this is where you run. Yikes. Run, run, run. Rena didn't stop walking, even if she let out that eerie laugh. Whenever Rena got too close to me, I would scurry away and run back towards her. I would turn back towards her. The cycle repeated over and over again. No matter how you looked at it, I was being chased by Rena and was trying to escape. <laughs> Jeez Louise! She's gotten, she's gotten totally insane as well. When I met with Rena on this road yesterday, she cowered and trembled as she followed her my commands. But today was different. Rena didn't show a hint of trepidation. Actually, wasn't I the one who was cowering? If the way home for Rena and me was the same, that's fine. I'd just change my route! That'd work out, wouldn't it? I turned onto a side street I'd never been down before and knew little about. But Rena saw me do that and followed me while laughing. Why? Why? Aren't you going home? Then just go home down the street you normally do. Why? Why would you follow me down this weird little side road? 
This thought screamed in my head, eventually spitting out in my mouth. <laughs> the tone of my voice was already tinged with terror. Oh, 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 how nice! A friendly chat with best girl. How wonderful. Not anymore! <laughs> there we go! It's a whole new sprite! Oh! Oh, she not happy in this art style. Oh, no, she not! <laughs> oh, Jesus! <laughs> oh, okay, that's a situation where the p the console graphics are actually creepier than the rank than the new ones. <laughs> wow! Oh, man! If you see this face, call a cab. Not because you're intoxicated, but because you gotta get the heck out of there. Oh, well, okay. This is pretty terrifying too, though. Rena's scream echoed, startling some nearby birds into flight. I cringed in fear. The only other thing I could do was increase my pace. No, thank you! No, no! Uh... Why was I running down this unfamiliar and deserted street? Yes! It's, it's the girl I'm running away from! <laughs> even though I was running, even though Rena was walking, why wasn't I getting any farther away? Yes! I wonder why! My breathing grew heavy, and it felt like my legs were giving out from beneath me. Rena wasn't even breaking a sweat. I had no idea what she was talking about to what exactly she wanted to do. Bad freak, get out, get out of here! When she said Satoshi's name, I turned back for a moment. But even as I did that, Rena was still advancing. I couldn't afford to stop. Where did this street connect to? All these twists and turns and ups and downs. It was hard to believe that this was even remotely in the direction towards my house. My sense of direction had long since gone out the window. The road led me deeper into the forest. Wasn't I getting farther away from the village the more I ran? I lost more and more of my composure the more I thought about it. But despite this realization, my inner self was still disturbingly calm. Why are you laughing evilly all the time? Damn it! What does transfer even mean? I won't let you transfer me! I won't end up the same as Satoshi! Press X to doubt! I started wheezing out of breath. My lungs were so hot that they felt like they were going to explode, and my heart was beating as hard as it, fast as it possibly could. I shouldn't have practiced running instead of my swain! I couldn't even afford to scoff at that stupid thought. <laughs> 
Yeah, how much fun that would be! Ren, I couldn't even imagine how much I wished I could turn the clock back on the past few days. Oof, that one hurts a bit. Dane, this is the point where I find it hard to believe this girl also still voiced Nagisa. At the beginning, they sounded exactly the same, but now this is a completely different character. Jeez. My footsteps made pathetic flopping sounds as my legs wobbled and faltered. Hot on my heels, Rena's steps were sharply breaking twigs underfoot. I had to accept it. I was on the run, being chased by Rena. If she caught me, it was all over. I realized it instinctively. I couldn't even begin to think of how the end would entail. Just that if I was caught, it was all over. That's all I knew. It didn't matter how it was going to end. I wouldn't let it end. Not without knowing anything. Not yet! That momentary lapse was all it took. Of all the things that could have happened, my knees buckled underneath me and I crumbled towards the ground. I tried to stand frantically, urging my legs to respond. I used my bat as a makeshift cane to prop myself up, but Rena was already standing right in front of me. Compared to me, out of breath and utterly exhausted, Rena was so cool and composed that she could have froze the air around her. She wasn't breathing hard at all. Rather, I couldn't even sense if her heart was beating. Well, you just chased me about 15 miles while carrying a hatchet. I can't imagine why that might make me afraid. Her expression looked almost affectionate. Those soulless eyes, that mask of affection. As she admonished me for trembling, Rena's hands deftly slipped over her head. The blur of arms as they moved made me feel like I was staring at the godliness of the thousand-armed Buddha. Then as both of her hands met above her head, the hatchet that she held out came into focus. I stared up in disbelief. It was all I could do. Rena stayed like that, with the hatchet raised above her head, and solemnly opened her mouth. It was as if she was expressing a farewell to a friend that she would never see again. That cruel scenario resided somewhere in her actions. サトシ君は転校したの。そのI became frantic the more I screamed, but Rena did nothing but maintain the smile frozen on her face. So, is this like an actual demon who's possessing people? Because if so, we can get a priest in here and get that exorcised. Get Vince Lampert over here. <laughs> if it does, you shouldn't be following it. Rena's gaze grew even more jet -li. Okay, this is normal. This is definitely normal. 100% normal. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here, Keiichi. <sighs> Yikes. The ferocity of her stare was so intense, not allowing me to question anything. <laughs> I don't believe that Oishira-sama should be respected and followed. Oishira-sama. 
そんなのいるわけがないいるよおやしろ様圭一君だって身近に感じてるはずだよそ,そんなもの感じたことないよ圭一君さ誰かに謝られたことない I felt you doing that. それもずっと All noise from the outside world disappeared. Only Rena's voice resounded loudly and terribly. That's creepy! You don't want anything involved with this demon stuff. I couldn't understand what Rena was saying. I don't understand. I don't understand. What does transfer even mean? What was Rena saying? It seems like she's trying to care for us. She's just doing it in the wrong way. <laughs> I just realized that was. <laughs> I was just <laughs> making those syllables, and I just realized that I accidentally did the Sans laugh. <laughs> Man, <laughs> my brother's such an idiot, but he's awesome. <laughs> it's the old whoopee cushion in the couch trick. Hilarious. Sansa's demented. I mean, Rena's demented laughter clanged around inside my head. Was Rena saying Oyashiro sama came to her as well? That's right. Last night I heard about that when I asked about Rena. Hagon Muyo do Nishimas. また内容には一部憶測も含まれているかもしれませんすべてが真実ではないかもしれないということですよろしいですね被害者も学校も告訴していないので長所がないのですつまり警察が関与してないわけなんですよですから詳細は関係者からの聞き取りのみなのですつまり信憑性が高くない被害者って言いましたかレナはガラスを割っただけじゃないんですかいえ男子生徒が3人ほどリュウグーレナに殴られています Wait, I don't remember them mentioning this 金属バットでです Hey Nan, is this brand new dialogue that we haven't seen before? Or did we read this before and I literally just like mentally blanked out and like didn't register it at all? 2人はあざで済みましたが I don't remember him telling us this. So, 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 I swear I didn't read this! They were beaten with a bat and suffered significant injuries? Normally there would be a criminal investigation. But why didn't they press charges? It's because they got beat up by a girl, that's why. Rena hit people while she broke the windows? Or was it she started breaking the windows after she got bored of hitting people? I remember him talking about what it would be like if Rena was attacking him with the windows. I don't remember this part where she actually did it. They sounded familiar, but the meanings were drastically different. Hmm. So it wasn't that strange if the four of them were together. 
理由は分かりませんリュグ・レナはプール倉庫脇にあった野球部のバットを手に取り3人を次々に殴り倒しましたえ There were no witnesses. This is an account pieced together by the information given at the time of the incident. One day after school, Rena and the free male students were at the pool storage shed talking to each other. Okay. Yeah, this did not happen. They, we did not read this before. I would have remembered this. They weren't seeking help, rather, they usually met up there. It appears it became a heated discussion. At that time, Rena underwent a change. The change was so abrupt that the three of them didn't comprehend what was happening. Then, taking the metal bat, she attacked her friends one after the other. Leaving her friends covered in blood with gashes on their heads, she made her way towards the school building. Yeah, I remember this CG. But we did not get this CG when talking with Luisi. Then she broke the glass windows one after the other. A few minutes later, a teacher appeared on scene and subdued her. Lena, you got that. 変化って何ですか3人の証言で一致するのは突然人が変わったひょう変したという点ですひょう変 I also could recall Rena's transformation I'd seen that change many times before it was so different from the usual Rena that I couldn't help but believe that it was someone else who looked like Rena so, okay so we aren't just imagining that that is actually happening ひょう変っていうのはたびたびあったことなんですかいえそういうのは全くなかったそうですいえそういうのは全くなかったそうです私も調べられる限り彼女の過去や病歴等を追ってみましたが見つけることはできませんでしたそのレナみたいに突然人が変わる現象って結構あ
事件はそのまま闇に消えるでしょうな。For a brief period, we sat in silence. At first glance, it looked like a simple assault case. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. The depths were obscured by roiling <laughs> waves, sinking quietly into the void as if it never existed to begin with. その後、学校を禁止で休学します。Good. Okay. The, how long does it take to beat.com definitely lied to me about this then. This is longer than the like 12 to 15 hours that it promised because at this point my Steam page says that I've been. Wait, it says I've only been playing for 13.4 hours? It must not have updated by now. So, in the same way, the Shinkei counseling was given to me. So, in the same way, what did you get? This is what I said. I was going to be a little bit of a s h o c 口が硬いんですよ。もうとにかく。警察手帳を見せてもダメなんですか。書面で申請しろと言われました。Yep, that checks out. 手帳自体に法的拘束力は何もありませんからね。じゃあ、大石さんはどうやってレナがお社様のことを告白したことを知ったんですか。一部を聞いてた看護師さんがいましてね。この方は手帳を見せただけで協力してくださいました。それでなんと Turns out the nurse hadn't heard everything. Apparently, all that she remembered was that she overheard from inside the room. 看護師さんが言うには、その時のリュウグウレナはとても淡々としていて、落ち着いていたそうです。It was more like she was confessing her sins at church than a counseling session. She spoke with her mother, there for some of it. But partway through, her mother was asked to leave, so it became a private counseling session between just the doctor and Rena for a while. Rey no, Oyashiro Sama no Hana Shua, Doko de Detectan Deska. Pochu des. Sono Namayo, Totsen Saken Dano des. Dagara, Kangoshi Samo, Bikuri Ste, Kikimimi o Tatetano des. Oyashiro Sama des. Rena suddenly shouted that. I had no idea what she was said before that, so I had no idea what the meaning behind it could have been. The doctor calmly and collectively asked Rena to have a seat. Gently, ever so gently. A fundamental part of counseling is to be a good, patient listener. リュウグウさんが今のお家に引っ越されるまいに住んでいた町ですね。私は引っ越したくなかったけど、お母さんとお父さんの都合で仕方なく引っ越しました。でも、親城様は許してくれなかったんです。リュウグウさんはきっと
村の外敵がたたられるのは分かりますがどうして出ていく村人まで普通出ていくものはたたられないものじゃないんですか I know it's a bit strange to say it, but I could see it as a rule to the people that the people who come in are the ones who would be cursed. Far from Jupiter, far from his thunder. Curses weren't something to chase after people that leave, were they? Uisi san pondered a bit over on the other end of the receiver, then began speaking again. Mm. I recalled hearing that. Long ago, Hinamizawa was feared and respected as the village of demons. Oh. That branch almost looks like a demon's hand. Those who set foot in Onigafuchi, in other words, Hinamizawa, would be cursed. I could understand that. それは分かります。でも出ていくのまで駄目ってのは。鬼たちもまたですね。属性に出ていかないよう親城様に厳しく見張られていたんだとか。つまり親城様っていうのは属性と鬼が淵の交流を禁じていたんでしょうな。I see. I finally understood what sort of a thing Oyashiro-sama was. つまり。親城様ってのは守り神ってよりも感謝なんですねこの地を外界から隔離しようとするそんな感じになるんでしょうなすみません私も詳しくないんですこの辺りはバー様の受け売りでしてそんな感じになるんでしょうなすみません私も詳しく
I could only believe that there was something that wasn't Rena residing within her. And here right now, it was standing before me. Rena, Rena stood imposingly, not answering. Satoshi was gone, but Rena was gone. Then I'm going to be gone. What are you going to do? I had never heard such an unpleasant laugh before. It had become akin to the sound of her breathing. It was no longer a voice or an expression or feeling. It's okay. Rena will help you help you. Rena took one step forward, still holding onto the hatchet high above her head. One step closer, Rena's face spread out to fill my vision. One step closer. Rena's nose was close enough to touch mine, and she was still pushing closer. I slumped down, landing squarely on my butt. It wasn't for some pathetic reason. It was all I could do to get as far away from Rena. <laughs> I had the gut feeling that I couldn't let her laughter end. Because when that laughing ended... That moment I picked up on that feeling, my body moved by instinct. I sprang to my feet so fast I couldn't even believe it and pushed Rena away from me, at me with both hands. Rena was as light as a feather. Thrown about by the unbalanced weight of the hatchet, she was sent backwards as if she had been carried off by the wind. After confirming that out of the corner of my eye, I dashed off at full speed. I was the perfect picture of f fleeing like a greased pig. Get away from Rena. Run away. Survive! I couldn't think of anything else other than this. While I was running, I remembered I'd been holding onto a bat the entire time. Such a worthless weapon. I couldn't believe I'd forgotten about this weapon to, at such an important time. I sped even farther down the winding path. I didn't even feel myself gasping for air or my legs getting heavy. My body understood it as well. If I didn't run away from here, I wouldn't live. I could hear the laughter of that sim simulacrum of Rena coming from behind me. It rang through the trees in my head and slowly chiseled away at my sanity. The grove of trees thinned out, my field of vision suddenly expanding. Where was this? For a moment I was bewildered by the scenery that I felt that I knew but I couldn't quite remember. I quickly realized I was at the dam site. The fact that I had dashed madly and ended up in a place like this gave me a bad feeling, like I just following was, so was following someone's scripted plot. Hey, that's meta! I had a good view of my surroundings, but I didn't see a single soul here. This was a terrible spot for someone on the run, but there was no better place for an attacker. My heart was already on the verge of bursting. The muscles in my legs were screaming, but I didn't care. If I stopped here, then they might not even be able to scream for much longer. Even still, I glanced back, looking for an excuse to rest. Rena wasn't there. Instead, I saw two villagers walking around. I breathed a sigh of relief that it wasn't Rena, but a third party. Except the voice inside me ran the alarm once again. The villagers walking around weren't suspicious in and of themselves, but it bothered me. They both wore rough-looking clothes. Empty-handed, they definitely gave the impression that they were just out for a walk. But, at this time of day, two adults wandering around without a purpose, it was enough to raise questions. But more than anything else, those eyes. They weren't chit-chatting while walking, they were both silent, heading forward, looking in my direction. Was I at the end of my rope and I had finally started imagining things? I should run away. That was probably the best choice. If they weren't involved, I'd lose them easily by running. If they were part of the group after me, then they would come running after me. Either way, unless I hurried up, Rena would catch up with me. That's right. I was going to run! Deciding that, the moment I began to turn tail, both of them rushed towards me as if knowing exactly what I was thinking. Hey, Shaggy! <laughs> Uh, I don't know why it suddenly cuts to photos of galaxy eyes, but it does. It's just that kind of game. Somewhere inside me, I jumped to the conclusion that Rena was the only thing I needed to be afraid of. 
I made the assumption that I didn't need to be afraid of anything else, but right now, I realized just how blatantly wrong I was. Suddenly, the story Uishi-san told me about the demons all leaving the village to hunt prey floated it through the back of my mind. I could tell that they were both coming after me without turning around because of their <laughs> frenetic footsteps. Uh, Shaggy, have you seen the title? I can't stop streaming until I finish with chapter one, and I was lied to that chapter one was only like 12 hours long, and I've been playing this game for like 15 hours, and it's still going. So, yeah. It was frightening being unable to shake Rena off as she slowly closed in on me, but this didn't even compare. Being pursued with such violent ferocity, this straightforward horror was unparalleled. One of the pursuer's arms grazed my shoulder. Now it wasn't just their frenzied footsteps, but also the distinct sound of their breathing that I could hear. No. I could practically feel them breathing on me. They were already right behind me. Calm down, Keiichi Maibara. Still, running at full tilt, I felt the surrounding area go still. No, it felt like time itself had stopped. I turned my head back slightly in that frozen world, realizing how close to my pursuers had gotten to me. I couldn't win against the legs of an adult. In less than the time it would take to blink twice, when the frozen time began moving again, they'd be on top of me. On top of me, and then... Don't think about that, Keiichi. First realize that you won't be able to shake them off like this. If the fact that you can't get away from them was a given, then you need to make a decision. Go with the right leg, or go with the left. You just need to decide which one. Let's go with the left. The moment I decided that, the temporal singularity burst into pieces. Right! Left! I swung the bat in a wide arc with my right arm. Using that inertia, I stopped and suddenly spun. No! The two of them were clearly startled. Momentarily losing sight of me, both their outstretched arms, ready to grab me, instead grasp at empty space. The man on the right, I applaud him for being able to figure it out, spun around to the spot I would have been in and stared at me in astonishment. But it was too late. I didn't even need to swing my bat. All I needed to do was extend my arm as I turned around. It was by no means a heavy blow, but it seemed like it had enough power behind it to knock him off his feet. But just knocking him down wasn't enough to scare him away. He got back up in no time. Both of them took a fighting stance and were ready to face me. This made me certain that they weren't just two people out for a walk. They were clearly after me. It felt much easier than dealing with Rena. Just by not recognizing their faces, by not knowing them, it made things easier. I smiled wryly on the inside. Ooh. It's fine if it was just a bluff. By barking out at them, I was able to fire myself up. They didn't respond. They spread out to either side of me with unbelievably calm expressions on their faces. One of them would grab me onto my bat and the other would hold me down. Was that their plan? Taking on both of them at once would be impossible. Hot sweat poured down every pore of my body. Then I'd just have to settle it with the first move. I'd step in and strike the first one down. Narrowing my target down to the man on the right, who had already been knocked down before, I stepped in and swung with all my might. There was no way for an unarmed person to guard against it. It would cause immense damage. If they blocked it with their arm, their bone would snap like a twig. If they turned their back to it, then it was possible that the blow would travel all the way through to their vital organs. It looked like he was aware of this. He pushed farther through the kill zone between us and delivered a fist right into my gut. Not good. With this distance, in this position, and in this state, there was no way for me to dodge it. The world flipped upside down. I understood that I was being tossed around like a rag doll. I landed on the soft earth without a sound, feeling the grainy soil press against my face. It didn't hurt at all. But the moment I fought that, I suddenly felt pain coming from the abrasions of my skin, as well as the contents of my stomach being forced upwards, flooding my mouth with a bitter sensation. I knew very well that I didn't have the time to relish its experience. I stood up as quickly as I could, but at that moment, the other man was already barreling towards me. Being able to comprehend calmly that I simply couldn't dodge made it all the more upsetting. After plowing into my stomach full force once again, my assailant twisted around behind me and locked onto my thick arm around my neck. My throat felt like it was being crushed by his immense strength. I couldn't even contemplate that I was being strangled or that I was about to go unconscious. My vision simply darkened and a silent whining noise began playing deep inside my mind. 
It took everything I had to keep myself from blacking out. While this was happening, the other man was more likely standing in front of me. I wasn't able to open my eyes, but I could feel that he was there. There was nothing I could do now. Unable to shake his arm off me, I couldn't run. I couldn't fight back. Dire straits. I couldn't even come up with a phrase that adequately described my situation. Jeez Louise, why are these random guys, like, trying to kill us? <laughs> Is that how it's gonna end? Just like, and then the guys made us black out. And that's chapter one.